his way to the ring, accompanied by James Mitchell. This is a bear. For the past three months on pay-per-view, Abyss and Sabu have squared off against each other from no disqualification matches to the unforgettable Monsters Ball. They battled at Unbreakable Bound for Glory and Genesis Pay-Per-View. And while the brutality was off the charts in all three bouts, the violence factor gets raised to another level. Tonight at Turning Point, it's TNA's first ever Barbed Wire Massacre. Introducing his opponent from Bombay. This is Sabu. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to putting your body on the line, when it comes to shutting out the pain, or using the pain as a motivational weapon, no one does it like the homicide suicidal, the genocidal Sabu, and look at the monster abyss, already on the attack, not even allowing Sabu to get in the ring, and Don, we have seen this situation with the monster abyss play out over the course of the past couple of weeks, as Sabu has, wow, a barbed wire baseball bat that he took a shot at him with, and it got stuck in the barbed wire ropes, we've seen abyss fight through the fear, and he's inside the six-sided ring, surrounded by the barbed wire ropes. Plus, there's barbed wire boards around the ringside. I'll tell you what, I like how Abyss came right out and attacked Sebu. A, a, a match that Sebu has an advantage because he's done it so many times. Exactly but right. You saw right there with the back how it's stuck in the barbed wire. Think about your flesh sticking in that. Think about your arms, your legs. If they can tangle up that with the force, when the body goes into that, the damage sometimes can be irreparable. And I will tell you this. Oh! face right into the head and there's another one on top of the head of this six foot eight 350 pound monster that Sabu going to do is bring up the chair. Oh, he catches him. A bitch going to oh, but he breaks it back to the Ten, ring. two, no. Whoa. Oh, my God. Caught him right in it. He tossed him off the pin attempt right into the barbed wire. You see James Mitchell at ringside. He loves every second of it. Sabu caught. Wow, his arm wrapped right in the barbed wire. Look at the referee, Rudy Charles. Protective uniform. He's got combat boots. He's got SWAT team pants. A long sleeve shirt. He's got gloves. Boy, he came prepared. You can see already what kind of an effect the barbed wire can have immediately. And he goes right in it. Now a bit goes right there for a chokehold. Anything he can to take the breath out of him. But you know, a doesn't want to go for a pin at this point. He wants to inflict damage. He wants to beat Sabu in his own game because Sabu has been terrorizing him with the barbed wire. Look out! Oh no, he's just fighting back. Abyss has Sabu. Gonna try and take him face first into the barbed wire, but you're right, Sabu does fight back. And Abyss now grabs onto the barbed wire just to prevent his head from going right in to that very unforgiving barbed wire rope. You gotta also gotta consider Sabu is out there wrestling with a broken nose. Where Abyss is caught him with a forearm and a ball. They had a few weeks ago when they pulled outside of the building. But I'm going to tell you something, pain is not an option. Pain is not anything you can allow to affect you in this match, because if you do, you will lose it. This is the kind of match you have to block out everything with your task at hand. Don, we promised you on Impact, ladies and gentlemen, this would not be like any other wrestling promotion that has advertised barbed wire matches. Oh, my God! And you see an example of it there? Oh, my God, his neck, he's stuck right in the barbed wire. Abyss took him high overhead and dropped him right across the barbed wire. You can see right there, Sabu trying to pull himself out of it. And it just stepped so early when JB took that out. Oh, oh, my, he had to go do whatever he had to do at home. Look at this. Well, you're right. Anything just to extricate himself from the barbed wire. And now he's got an object. What does he have done? I don't know, but he's going right there, right in a pit, and just grinding it in the yard, just breaking the blood and breaking it out. Oh, man, Sabu had that somewhere hidden in his 
Sabu on the attack with, with that weapon, whatever it is, he's driving it into the arm. Oh, the monster abyss, and he does so again. It's just amazing. We've seen Abyss overcome the fear of barbed wire. You heard from James Mitchell earlier. You heard during the pre-show. Something in Abyss has passed that triggered that reluctance to go anywhere near the barbed wire. But Mitchell has helped him face his fear. Sabu, steel chair, position. Here he coming. comes! Oh, God! Abyss gets out of the way! And then Sabu is getting himself caught time and time again! He's already ripped his pants right there. We got to see a replay there. Oh, if there's any chance, let's take another look at this off the chair. Oh, man. Ow! There's nowhere you can run. There's nowhere you can hide. It can't be avoided, Mike. Sabu in such severe pain. And, Don, we mentioned this earlier. If there's any individual that can fight through that pain or use the pain as a motivational tool, look at the arm of Abyss, the blood streaming out of it. That has to be Sabu. Substantial height and weight advantage for this 6'8", 350-pound monster. I almost think it's countered by the experience edge of Sabu, particular his history in barbed wire matches over in Japan. Well, it's obvious he can fight through the pain. I mean, but the I'm realizing it as the match goes, you have somewhere to go. You, you get almost that it's there, of course. Ah! Ah! Right in the barbed wire. That is the Fight big through the pain miss. of this. Let's take another look at this. Abyss charges across. Here he comes right into your living room. And he's dropped toe hold by Sabu and goes right into the barbed wire. And there's a steel chair shot. I'll tell you what, I'm amazed at how well they put this barbed wire up. bounce off of. Big clubbing blow to the top of the head by the monster abyss. It just dropped. It stopped Sabu in his tracks. Sabu back up to his feet. He's caught. Could be a choke slam. Oh! Right on the chair. Back first into the steel chair. Pin attempt. Two. No. I mean, think about that. Not only did it, Sabu had to feel the pain of the barbed wire. And look at right there. James Mitchell threw in that barbed wire chair. And Abyss, who would before would never even touch the likes of that, now he's got over his fear and he sets it up right on top of Sabu. Oh no! Now what's he gonna do? Oh, Chair man. right across the chest and face of Sabu. He's got nowhere to bounce you can't off. Spring of. off the ah! What a counter by Sabu! Right where it hurts the most. Oh man! Abyss thought that he had neutered him. Thought he had weakened Sabu sufficiently to try that move, but no, Sabu was able to position the chair. Yes, it's wrapped in fire. Oh, oh, God, he hit him in the head with it. Look at the blood on the arm of Abyss. Sabu showing no mercy. He goes back and hits him on the head again. On the head again. Oh, this is just brutal, folks. I can't even describe what I'm seeing. What you're seeing, Don, is one of the most physically violent spectacles in the history of pay-per-view wrestling. And TNA is presenting it to you in this barbed wire massacre. Watch Sabu spring off the chair. He goes over on Khalil. 